One lambes. No, I was responding. Oh, so welcome back to Aura's uh, Digest. And today, I love to go through something. Ah, getting get on. I remember a few years back when Wamlambis was all over the social media and TV and we're talking about the next big thing. And, you know, someone went and said something very heretical in Twitter that Wamlambis was bigger than unbogable. And for the people who grew up during the time of unbogable and the political stuff was happening, that was heresy to do that. According to me, Wamlambes was only popular between Athi River and Kiambu. That's where it was popular, not everyone else. And a lot of people, you know, caught flack for that. It's like, okay, what should we do? Let's consult the Oracle, the data. So at this time, I did some uh, article for the Nation Media Group, which was looking at, is Wamlambes as big as it is? And the whole uh, group, let's call them Gengeton. Uh, for this, so sailors, uh, the packaging, and the rest. And then I found this very interesting thing uh, on the YouTube stats. So when you look at the views over time, let's say one year, and you group the secular music, the warm lambes types, and gospel music, there's this pattern where within the first month of releasing of the music, uh, for uh, let's say packaging, uh, sailors, and the rest, there was like this huge uh, growth in viewership, like a million plus. And then over the several months, it, it has like this exponential drop in that. But gospel music had this different uh, approach where the views will grow slowly, get to some point, and then over time, you know, keep, keep growing. And I'm like, oh, this is so uh, quite an interesting thing to observe. So yesterday when I was on Twitter and then I know, how they tweet someone complaining that Gengeton died because Kenyans did not support their music. I'm like, no, it's not that. It's because we don't understand how music is consumed. If we consider music as a product and we analyze it as a product, then uh, you know, in instead of disparaging the music as seeing gangster-like people, <laughs> music, that's not the issue. The issue is that the type of music that's made and how it's consumed, cons it has a very different pattern with the different types of, uh, type of music. And one of the things is that uh, there's a concept known as ego depletion in consumer psychology. What they tell you is that we have a finite amount of ego or willpower. Once we lose it, then we become susceptible to anything. And uh, eating too much food, going to a brothel, <laughs> I'm very sure if you were to take record of all your sexual life, you'll figure out you have too much sex when you're tired of doing other things. You, you've depleted your ego uh, for that. So you come in to replenish your ego. So the kind of bouncy, nice music tends to be what people digest after they have had a tiring day, a, a traumatizing moment so that they can replenish what they have. Once they've achieved, they replenish the ego, they no longer need the music. They don't. They'll listen to something else. Gospel, R&B, whatever it is. So the music quickly loses its value in a very short time. And if you also add other factors like it's new music, people are just shocked by it, and then like people talking all over, you know, people speaking interesting languages, uh, you know, dialects, Kiswahili, Shang, whatever it is, then boom, what do you have? exponential growth, right? And it's this interesting thing, uh, you know, in data science, that's in, uh, picked it up from uh, Karim Kar on Twitter, which says that exponential growth also has exponential uncertainty. When something grows too fast, it has too much uncertainty in it. You don't know whether it will work or not. But people tend to misconceive that as something's growing very fast, it also means that it's going to be great. No, a lot of products come in, grow very fast, die out. That's it. There's nothing, that, that, yeah, nothing else. When something grows slowly, it gives you time to understand what it is, who is listening to it. And if you are in products and you look at the product life cycle from innovators, early adopters, up to your logins, you tend to understand there are different phases where you have different audiences. 
and they provide different things to the product. So while we're busy dancing, we don't understand anything about that point, especially if the majority of the viewers come within the first month uh, on that. So it's a, it's a problem. It's not a problem. It's the nature of the music. The music was not meant to be Mariah Carey, where people listen to Tina Turner, you know, Shaka Khan, K South Flavor, all the musicians that we listen to over 10, 20 years. No, it's a different type of music. And if it is a product, it's a product that you're supposed to use and dispose, like tissue paper or diapers. It's not something that has longevity uh, in it. So think about who consumes your product and how they consume it. And you can extrapolate that to anything and realize getting it is not dying because people hate it. It just sounded purpose and it's gone. So uh, there's another group of people who believe that Gengeton has no future or had no future because of the lyrics and promoting drugs, sex, alcohol, and all that. That's not entirely true because if you listen to Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Eminem, Exhibit, all the lyrics are very dirty to get about weird things. But the difference is that the music had what you call musicality. The tune, the melody, you could nod your head to the tune. Every time Dr. Dre beats that dropped, everyone would just nod your head session. It was great. So think about it. if you had to take any of the Gingerton music, remove all the lyrics and play the tune, would even recognize the tune, would even know what music it is. Probably not, because it hasn't been packaged in a way that it starts from a music perspective. Music is not just the lyrics. It starts from the tune to the melody to whatever it makes you feel. So it misses that part and that makes it have a very short uh, shelf life. Something else just to think about. If you were to pick Gangeton, would it be the kind of music that would be resampled by the next generation so that they can make more hits? Probably not. Would it be featured in a movie? Probably not, yeah? Someone could argue perhaps that's not what it is meant to do. But that's what gives music uh, its longevity. I think Compe by Bamboo was featured in an American movie, Primeval, uh, I think. And that was more of like a hip hop rap music, but it had that musicality in it. So I don't think the uh, you know, the dirty lyrics are just what make them not go anywhere. No, it starts from the production point of view, uh, from that. It doesn't give them that longevity that someone would want to listen to it one year, two years, three years down uh, the line. So next time before you say Gengeton died because of that, think about uh, uh, whether you'd listen to it, your child would listen to it, your great-grandchild uh, uh, listen to it. That's it for this week. Until next time, keep dancing. Keep dancing. <laughs>